Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to another patch breakdown. Uh, Josh and I here. Oh, I'm looking at this camera now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, just baby. Another video, which if you haven't watched, we're going to send you in a video feedback loop. And you should check out the patch breakdown I just did. And Josh interviewed me. And now I'm interviewing him to do his patch breakdown for Modular Nights. So, Modular in the spot. Modular in the spot. That's right. Because we had a huge <laughs> modular weekend with so much modular, I can't even remember everything that happened. Yeah, I feel um, you, dude. Yeah. Um, it, it was great. Uh, modular on the spot. First virtual modular on the spots, by the way. Nice. Yeah. First there. Um, Shout really out COVID. Participate. Yeah, not really the best circumstances, but cool that we could do it yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, your modular on the spot performance yeah um, baby tell, tell me a little bit about it what was going through your mind when you were preparing your patch for that well it it was less of an exercise in sound as much as as much as it was an exercise in performance um, I've, I've kind of spent this whole year kind of configuring this rig. It's pretty much there. Uh, but what, what I'm, I'm really building this whole rig around is the poly end preset. Um, John Cameron turned, turned, turned me on to it a, a few months back. Uh -huh. Um, and it is just such a powerful mo uh, module. It makes performing really easy. Um, but you know, it, it does require some sense of foresight, some sense of, you know, pre-planning that I'm not normally used to, especially when I'm going into the modular. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's such a, a performance tool um, that I really wanted to kind of learn it and figure it out um, and use it to the best of its ability. Yeah. Um, so yeah, basically this patch was just kind of, the goal was kind of just, I would love to make an entire patch where I could perform the whole thing on just the poly end preset <laughs> and my uh, Bastel uh, three channel mute. Uh, so literally just the buttons on the preset and then the buttons on the mute. And I kind of just wanted to have that be the whole control for the patch. I mean, obviously, obviously, like I'll, I'll mess with filters and delay times here and there, but it's like I don't need to. I could just fuck around in the poly end and, and just jam. Um, and so that, that's that's what I wanted to do. Um, yeah. And you know, it's 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 the weather's been nice. It's been sunny. I've been feeling good. You know, despite everything going on. You know, things. You know, it, it's a chill vibe in some ways right now. You know, at least I'm trying to, I'm trying to revel in in that at least. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to go for like a sunnier vibe, right? Mm -hmm. um, so th that's what I was thinking going in, going into it. I know that was such a huge ramble. Um, oh, no, no, that, that was that was my thought process. As, as you'll notice right now, my my modular is not patched. Uh, I, I teach private lessons throughout the week, and so totally. because this is a weekend after uh, the performance, I had to unpatch so I could I could teach. But you know, I think for the most part, I know what I did. So I'll try my best to replicate it. Obviously it's going to be a little different. Uh, yeah, but I mean, yeah like, no, it's cool. Really it's like a performance wise and modular. I mean, perfectly. That's yeah, that's exactly. Way, so. Exactly. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Bear with me if it sucks, but I think it'll be all right. <laughs> um, okay. So where, where should we get started? Huh? Yeah. Maybe just kind of walk me through your main voices for, um, your sounds, um, just one by one, best of your ability to remember, and kind of what your modulation sources were, what was going into yeah, that. yeah. All right, so the the first sound source actually kind of started here. You know, the Ooh, the organelle. Love it. Uh, I, I I have the nebulae here, which is a very powerful sampler module. Sometimes I use it for live sampling and recording sounds within the modular, but sometimes I'll just load shit onto the thumbstick. Uh, and use that. Uh, so I recorded a few different samples on the organelle and put yeah. them on the uh, the nebulae. Hold on, I just gotta sort through my patch cables here, find the uh, find the right size. <laughs> um, all right, so I'll go out of my nebulae. Uh, oh, and another thing too is when I perform, because uh, I use the uh, ES9 
the Expert Sleepers ES9 as an audio interface into Ableton, Very nice. uh, which is really great. It, it's great for multi-tracking patches and mixing. Uh, but the hard part about performing is uh, it's not a mixer that has faders. You know, mm. uh, and you know, I could like MIDI map like a MIDI controller to Ableton, but it's like you know, this is modular on the spot. And, you know, I got to do modular only. <laughs> You're, uh, a purist. You're a purist. I'm a purist, baby. Yeah. The, so it's like I literally have a module that takes MIDI interfaces in. So. Oh yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. That's <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Um, but yeah, all that to say, it's like I needed some way to control the level of sounds. So most every single sound before it goes to the ES9 is going to go to a VCA or an attenuator of some sort. Um, wow, I'm really just rambling here. Ugh, but That's good. That's that's what you get. Um, let's see. Let me, let me put this shit in. This, I this is like a, it's like a patch reverse breakdown. Yeah. 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 Oh, absolutely. I'm into it though. Okay, let's see if this works. There you go, there's sound, baby. I got it. So yeah, I control the volume with the attenuators, which made it really easy to go in and out. Um, you turn it down just a little bit. Yeah, how's that, how's that? It's a little better. All right, all right, let me know if I need to change it at all. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so this is the sample I started with. I think I had it pitched down an octave. Oh, wait, shit, I also had to go under the reverb, dude. I gotta send it to the reverb, you know? Of course. Of course. Of course. Oh, goddamn. This Especially is gonna that, be such like, a... melodic bell sound, just... Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. The organelle, man, it's got some, some pretty, pretty shit going on in there. Um, get into the reverb. Yeah, so this is the sample I started with. Uh, I had this sample, which is, like, some sort of uh, D9 chord... Uh, and then this is some sort of like E7 chord. Uh, and then I have this percussive wash of noise um, that I got from this vinyl record of like ambient interior sounds. Ooh, I like it. So I got this like, per this is like, like a Chinese restaurant, I think, and it's like the busboy doing the dishes, you know? Uh, so it's like this melodic, or uh, ambient percussive wash. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I have those three sounds in the nebulae. So it's like kind of pretty, but uh, and then kind of gross and percussive at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and then, oh yeah, and then I'm clocking everything through Ableton via this clock module. My camera's covering up where your hand is. What, what module is it? Oh, it's, it's the IntelliGel uh, Micro MIDI, the 1U module. Uh, I'm, I'm using that to get BPM data from Ableton and syncing my modular with that. Nice. Uh, so that is actually going quite a few different places. Um, and this is kind of where the performance aspect kind of starts to, to come into play. Um, so I have the clock being malted, and one of the places it's going is the uh, sample, the, the play next sample button on the nebulae. You know, so if I set a gate, I could change the sample that it's being played. Um, and so I'm using the the main clock to trigger that, to trigger that sample being changed. Uh, but then, uh, before I, you know, before I send it that signal to the nebula, I put it through this mute first. Uh, so right now it's muted. There's no signal coming through. The sample's not changing. But then I can flip it on. Oh wait, wrong button. Then I can flip it on. Re wait, wait, rewind, rewind. Then I can flip it on. There you go. There you go. So the, <laughs> the sample can switch, and the ability of the sample switching, I can turn on and off with the mute. That's very good. Uh, so there's that. Um, so I had that sound. Um, and then I had drums, uh, but most of the drums came from the Disting Mark IV. Um, 
my, which one of my students actually just very graciously just gifted to me. Uh, awesome. I used modular to payments. Fuck, modular payments, baby. I used to fucking hate this shit, dude. <laughs> I used to hate modules like this. This shit's dumb. It's like a thousand functions and and two knobs and, and a screen. Like like I hate that shit so much. Yeah. I have a distinct uh, three, and I totally feel there. I I don't even know probably three quarters of the th- things that this yeah, thing can do. I dude. mostly use it as modulation sources. Yeah, exactly. And as I say this, of course, ignore the fact that I also have an ornament in crime. Just forget that. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, you know, the the more I've, I've used it, the more that I, I've come to realize that you know, if you just find those like one or two functions, mm-hmm. out really well, exactly. Then this thing fucking bangs all right this is dope um and i actually learned this from indiegogo go shout out you know when we when we did their patch breakdown oh yeah um you know they 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 used this this thing uh they had an amen break sample and they 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 clocked it to their patch and so i was like that's dope as hell i have to do that of course (laughs) um so let me set that up. Uh, so I recorded, I recorded like a like a drum sample uh, out of this modular. Actually, in another patch, I recorded a drum sample, um, and I broke it up, and I have it going into er, in the disting. Yeah. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Sorry, I'm doing so much rambling, but it's just it's just there's so much going on, you know. <laughs> no, it's good. That's that's why we're all here, getting to the nitty gritty. Yeah, mad respect for anyone that can figure out the 50 different things that a distinct can do. Dude, it's like more than 50, dude. It's like 80. <laughs> no, that's not true. I don't know, actually. I'm, I'm just talking shit. I don't actually know. But it's a lot. It's a crap ton of stuff. Um, okay. All right. The distinct. Anyways, here we go. That's what I ask myself every time. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's X. Anyways, that's besides the point. Um, shit, where'd my sound go? Did I break it? I must have broken it. In a different mode? No. Yeah. What? No, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. There it is. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty sure this is it. I wasn't sure. So, anyways, I have that those drums. Um, and then from here, that's when I move on to the polyand preset. All right, that's when. That's yeah. when uh, the whole aspect comes in so okay so i have all these channels on the poly end preset right mm-hmm. so i'm gonna set these all you know to, to gates to gate signals uh, then i'm gonna copy it you know yep so now all these channels you know have these gate outputs and all of these gate so every time i i hit one of these pads it sends a different gate output each time Um, and then so every time I hit a gate I send that shit and trigger a random voltage I have so many random random voltage sources in this case Um, I love love the random shit I love the random stuff because 
I, I, I don't like thinking too hard. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking hard enough using the poly end. <laughs> so I have all these random voltage sources, store random voltage sources. So every time I hit one of these pads, it sends, you can see by the LEDs in, in the top here, uh, it sends out and holds different random sources. Mm -hmm. Making sense, right? Yeah. Um, so then what I do is I take those random sources and I'm going to send them a bunch of different places, right? So uh, maybe for, for, for this set of random voltages, I'm going to send it to the nebulae, you know, that's controlling that organelle sample. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll hit the, the start time of it um and the, the 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 length of the sample you know i'll hit the uh the the just the various timbral uh, uh you know modulation options um so I'll, I'll just i'll just get a different sound out of this guy every time right very cool um every every time i hit the pad it's gonna make a different sound out of the nebulae make sense um and then I'm also going to send random voltages to the marbles, uh, which is going to be my main like gate and melodic uh, sequencer uh, for the other drums and other voices we haven't even got to yet. Um, but I'm, I'm going to use this to modulate various things. So like the the division of the clock rate, um, you know, the the the, cool. the clock division between the left gate and right gate. Um, and then the jitter, oh man, the jitter is one of the dopest uh, parameters I've ever used in a module. So what it does, what it does is it basically tells uh, the marbles, okay, is this clock or this gate output, how far ahead of the clock is it going to be or how far behind the clock is it going to be? So you can get these really crazy ass swinging effects. Uh, so yeah, I'm setting my random modulation there, of course. Um, and then, I don't know, I have one more. Where did I send it to? I have no idea, but let's just pretend I sent it to um, the one of the delay inputs on the chrono blob, which I'm sure we'll do something with it later. How <laughs> uh, much you love the chrono blob, so I'm sure. I love the some way. fucking chrono blob. <laughs> this shit is the best, all right? This is the best module. It's great in existence all right don't at me all right it's the best all right so let me turn this Which shit mode are using ping pong oh ping pong always dude the the other delay modes garbage dude ping pong only baby good thing it's the first mode uh, i know i know it, you know pe people will say josh how can you say that the other modes are garbage but yet say it's the best module of all time um, and I say the ping pong mode is so fucking good that that on its own makes it the best <laughs> module. Okay. This is not a paid ad, by the way. I, I just really like the chrono blob. Um, totally. Anyways, <laughs> let me turn the sound up and let's, let's kind of hear this with now the, the added performance aspect of the polyend preset. sounds good uh oh you know what i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do okay i figured it out justin all right the y input on the disting that is the clock rate of the sample all right and the x input the x input is the reset so i'm gonna take this second gate output of the marbles and pack that to the sample reset all right and then you know what this this voltage this random voltage i have going to the chrono blob time no we're actually going to send that to the z input on the disting uh and this is this is what i did in the patch it's just it's all coming back to me now all right it's been a week right um the z input controls which sample it's playing um because you know i 
God. All right, just, all right, just, oh, there we go, there we go. Because uh, I took, I recorded a, a, a drum beat out of this, clocked it to Ableton, and then it was like just a four bar drum loop, and I chopped each bar into one sample. Mm-hmm. So four different drum beats basically in, in this guy. Um, and so now every time I hit the volume preset, in addition to everything else it's also doing, it's gonna switch the sample on the disting randomly. Oh, fuck, that shit's so good, dude. I'm into it. <laughs> okay, 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 moving on, moving on, because there's other shit, right? There's other shit, and how, how long has it been? I don't wanna, I don't wanna take too much of our time, your time. <laughs> oh, no, this is great. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay. Fuck, where were we? Right, the drums, all right? Because uh, we had those distinct drums, but I also layered it with other drums, uh, like from the Peaks and Platts and, and the 2HP play sample player here. Um, so let's see here, let's see here. Let's take uh, this gate out of the marbles that um, is also clocking the drums on the disting. All right, we're going to take that guy and we're going to malt it via a, a, a tip top uh, stackable. All right, we're going to malt it. Classic. And we're going to go out of that and that while also clocking the disting sample is also going to be a kick drum coming out of the peaks. And I'm going to go out from the peaks uh, into one of the filters on the Bifaco uh, BF22 filter. It's basically an, basically an MS20 clone filter. Mm-hmm. Um, and I used to have an MS20. It was one of my first since I ever had. <laughs> and I sold. Why did I sell it? Why did I sell it, Justin? What the fuck is wrong with me? Why did I sell it? <laughs> I sold it because I got into modular and fuck all my other synths, right? Um, but I missed that filter. I missed it. I needed it. I longed for it. I, I dreamt of it every night. And I, no matter what, I always thought, thought of the filter and how I want the filter. And so I have the filter now, and it's fucking great. Um, so I, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna use that for for my kick drum. So let's send that to to Ableton. All right, all right, all right. The annoying thing about using the ES9 is every time I uh, create a sound or pass something in, I have to uh, create a channel in Ableton. It's really it's really a pain. But a small price to pay for the ability to multi-track my patches. Definitely worth uh, it. Oh shit, this is crazy. peaks for a while hopefully i can squeeze one into my 12 view here dude okay here's the thing about the peaks all right i yeah i mean you know I'm, I'm always switching out my modules but they're like those few modules that i just are mainstays in my system um and the peaks is like the second module i bought ever yeah. ever and that was what four or five years ago i missed six years i don't i don't even know it's been a while um so this is a good ass module <laughs> that's all i'm saying yeah um, this kick is fine, I guess. I'm not hot about it, but it's fine. All right, let's, let's, let's hear it. Let's turn the sample switching on on the manipulate with the mutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. All right. Cool. And then. We need some sort of we need we need other other things going on with the drums. Uh, we need other things going on. Um, so let's take. Uh, oh oh, but, <laughs> what a fool am I? Of course, we need to um, send the the kick drum to some sort of uh, VCA or attenuator again because I need a V 
be able to control the volume of, of all the sounds. Um, yeah. In this case, what I'm going to do. Uh, oh, God. Fucking stackable. All right. What I'm going to do here is. I'm going to go out, send the trigger to another channel on my three channel mute, and I'm going to control the. Uh, the, the, the be able to mute the triggering of, of that kick drum rather than than triggering the like the 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 sound itself mm-hmm. yeah you know, it's better it's better uh, you know when you're doing these kind of mute things uh, if you can mute the control signal rather than the sound itself because then you're less likely to get the pops that what happens you know with sound right mm-hmm. anyways. What was I doing? Oh shit! I was gonna add a hi hat or some sort of drum, other yeah, drum. Building on the drums. Building on the drums. I'm gonna send um, this this main clock output of the marbles to this two HP clock divider, which has two channels of clock multiplication or division. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send one to trigger the plats and one to trigger the two HP play. Um, yeah, that's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. All right. And then send them both to... Where am I sending them? Oh, I'm going to send them to VCAs. I'm sending them to VCAs. All right. Sorry, all my patch cables are on the ground right now. So it's like I'm having to, like, reach down and, like, grab them. Um, you know, it's okay. Bradley can do some editing. It'll be fine. (laughs) (laughs) It's fine. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. So I'll send that to channel six. All right. Send that guy to channel seven. All right. And then out of the 2HP play, we'll send to there. All right. There it is. There it is. Oh, and you know what? I'm going to send uh, random voltages, completely random, untriggered, unquantized. I'm going to send those random voltages to the clock. The, the rates of the division and multiplication on the 2HP clock divider, which again is sequencing the plats and play. All right. All right. Send that shit to VCAs, get those random voltages in there. All right. Last step. All right. Last step is to create a channel and two channels in Ableton. Two channels in Ableton. All right. <laughs> Uh, Live reverse patch breakdown. Reverse patch breakdown. This is like the patch patch construction. Patch construction, baby. We're not breaking it down. We're building it. (laughs) All right. Patch build up. Here we go. Here we go. Just a few more things. Just a few right. more things. All right. A few more things. A few more things. A few more things. So I also had a melodic voice coming out of the Dixie, um, playing in key with the sample on the Nebulae. What's really cool about the marbles um, for the melodic sequencing, you can actually record your own custom scales into it. Like if you have like an external keyboard or, or sequencer or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was able to just record the exact notes that were in that original organelle sample and record that as a scale in the marbles. Um, so it made it really easy to keep the, the Dixie in tune in tune with that. Yeah. Uh, 
Oh god, man, this is this is uh, the worst patch breakdown video ever because I need to tune this oscillator. <laughs> but don't worry, don't worry. I'll, I'll keep the volume down. I won't blow your ears out. Uh, <laughs> Me and our viewers will appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay, it's tuned to E right now. It's tuned to E. You can't see my Ableton screen, but 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 you. Uh, it's tuned. <laughs> All right, I need to tune it to C because the notes I recorded in the marbles were the the D. Boy, shit. Was it the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I recorded the D notes. There you go. Oh god. Hopefully you can That's... remember the right scale because that will definitely impact. Yeah, I guess we'll find out again, right? Just trust me. Just trust me when I say right now it's in tune. All right. I don't know if you can really trust that, but let's just say it's in tune. <laughs> Um, all right, so I'm gonna go out. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Uh, pulse wave out of the Dixie again into this MS20 filter because it's dual channel because it's dope as hell. Um, and then I'll take this shit to VCAs or AVCA. Um, and then, oh man, what's gonna trigger the gate? Let's just take the main clock and that'll trigger the, <laughs> the envelope. I, it's not at all how I had it patched originally, but like, fuck it, dude. It's fine. Um, so close let's enough. use, yeah, yeah, close enough. Let's use envelope three. There you go. There you go. And then we'll send the envelope coming out of the ornament in crime um, to, you know, do the thing, do the thing. Um, open and close the uh, the VCA, that thing, you know? Okay. God damn it. Longer patch cable, dude. I need to just get. I just need more patch cables. That's that's really my problem. I Do you find was lucky. not having enough patch cables. Oh, you can never have enough. I'm lucky. I bought some before um, the last modular nights because I was, especially since I recently expanded to 12U and I've been popping yeah, into new right. modules. Um, yeah, the cable right. shortage was real. Cable shortage is real, dude. It's such a fucking struggle. Let's let's see let's see how this goes though. I if I if I like weave it through, there you go. I can use that channel of the VCA. That'll work just fine. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And then out of there, <laughs> that'll go into the chrono blob. Perfect. Um, that'll go into the chrono blob, and then that'll go out stereo to uh yeah to the thing. Oh god. Oh god, I hope I didn't just touch the Dixie out of tune. It's fine. It's fine, it's fine. We'll we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Uh, okay. Create a new channel. Input nine and ten. Okay. Alright, let's see how this goes. Alright? Alright, let's do it. Alright, pray for me. Pray for me. Alright. <laughs> That's terribly out of tune, but do you know why it's terribly out of tune? Because I didn't even put the fucking Volper Octave in it yet. <laughs> that would make a difference. All right, here we go. <laughs> basically the patch that's all the sounds but in addition to performance um i did you know use utilize all the the pads on the poly end preset mm -hmm. um i had them all setting different combinations of gate signals for the random sources and then also using the 
the DC, the voltage outputs on the polyend preset uh, to open and close the various VCAs of the different sound sources. Uh, So that in that way, uh, I could also use these pads to perform mutes and and mute certain sounds. Um, I'm not going to set that up now because it it actually does take quite a bit of time and and thinking uh, to set up. Um, But that's there. Um, it's doing that. Uh, so yeah, basically the whole patch, I'm able to use these Bastel mutes and then use my fingers to, to play the poly end preset, um, uh, and not really have to worry about much else other than bringing in the sounds via the attenuators. Cool. Yeah. Well, for your performance for modular on the spot, did you, um, for your set, did you have like a particular way you were trying to approach that performance or like certain modules no you to focus no on, or just all not of actually just, you just um, went for it i just went for it i mean i i used to very much be in the mindset of like structuring performances mm-hmm. uh, and like you know having distinct parts um and while i still really do like doing that um what i've been gravitating more towards is creating patches where in the performance uh it's not like you i'm like checking my phone like okay it's five minutes in i need to make this transition or you know or just follow some sort of structure like rather i like having patches that i could very very easily just jam on and just not have to think hard and just push buttons and play the music and just kind of hit a button, see what the instrument does, and then just respond to it. And just kind of this this freestyle dialogue between me and the modular. Um, Very cool. And I'm just jamming. I, I don't I don't like the structure. I just got you know you know what I mean? I yeah. just like to jam. Yeah, just flow. Yeah, just let just just let what happens happens. Um, if that makes sense. Uh, you just gotta push a button, see what it does, and just roll with the punches. And that's how I structured that performance. <laughs> cool. But yeah, but yeah, I'll, I'll I'll play this for a little bit, just a few minutes, and then uh, yeah, let's hear you go to town. That's it. Here we go. Mm-hmm. 